In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a basic Ruby setup up and running on Ubuntu 10.10 using RVM, the Ruby version manager. When planning this video, I came across a guide by Ryan Biggs that took the same route that I was investigating, so I'm mostly following his lead, and you can use his blog post as a reference, or even to copy and paste from. On Linux, there are generally three main ways to install Ruby, from source, from packages, or through a tool like RVM, like we're going to use. Ryan strongly suggests not using Ubuntu packages for installing Ruby. There are many reasons for this, but I agree, generally, having both been burnt by the packages myself, and having seen many people run into trouble. Nonetheless, RVM is such a great tool that I'd choose to use it even above well-produced packages. RVM makes it so easy to install and switch between different versions of Ruby that will carry along along that path. So the first step is to open the terminal application to get a shell prompt. You'll find this on Ubuntu under the Applications and Accessories menu. If you're using the server version of Ubuntu, you should already be at a shell prompt, whether you're working direct or through SSH. Ryan's post uses the traditional apt-get command to install packages. Aptitude, however, is now the recommended way to install packages on Ubuntu and Debian, uh, for a variety of reasons, including far better dependency tracking. If you don't have Aptitude installed, you can get it now with sudo apt-get install aptitude. Now Aptitude is installed, we'll run sudo aptitude update. This is in order to ensure that the list of package sources is up to date. Next, we need to prepare to install RVM itself. We need the default compilation and building tools, and RVM has Git, the version control system, and curl, the HTTP client library, as dependencies. We can install all of these with a sudo aptitude install build hyphen essential git hyphen core curl. Now it's RVM's turn. Typically you'd install RVM from a pre-existing Ruby installation, but since we don't have one, we can use a clever alternative offered by RVM to do a pure install. It involves running a shell script hosted on the RVM server. If you're worried about the content of this shell script, you can just look at it directly by using the curl command, but for our purposes, we're going to pipe it straight into bash, like so. and run it. Note that RVM is now installed to our local home directory, so sudo will not be necessary to install or use Ruby implementations through RVM. It's now necessary to add a line to our bash profile or bash rc file to engage RVM whenever we're using the shell. Without going into details, we do this by adding a, a line to our home dot bash rc file like so. The easiest way to make this take effect now is to close the existing shell and to open a new session. Now we can run the rvm notes command in order to see what rvm suggests we should install next in order for our Ruby implementations to proceed smoothly. In our case it suggests that a number of Ubuntu packages we can install with aptitude. We'll copy and paste these and add sudo at the start because these are to install system wide and go. Now our packages are installed. It's important to note though that many of them are not 100% essential but they may be used by popular Ruby libraries. So installing them all shouldn't harm anything, but it will make life a lot easier down the road. Finally, we can now actually install a Ruby implementation itself. We're going to focus on Ruby 192, the latest production version of Ruby. This can take a while, so you might want to take a break once you run the following command. rvm install 1.9.2 go.
Now Ruby 192 should be installed, but we need to tell RVM that we wish to use it. We can do this simply with RVM192, or if you prefer in a longer form, RVM use 1.9.2. Let's run it. Now let's see whether the switch worked by asking Ruby for its version info with Ruby V. And there we have it, it seems to have worked. We can go further at this stage by installing other versions of Ruby as we see fit, or you can even set a specific Ruby as your default implementation. For example, to make Ruby 192 your default implementation, you can run rvm dash dash default use 192. Anytime you open a shell after this, Ruby 192 will be selected automatically. From here, you can use Ruby gems to install libraries for Ruby to use, such as Rails, Nokagiri, Sinatra, and so on. Let's take a very quick look at this by installing Rails. To do this, under the currently selected Ruby Im implementation, run gem install Rails. This will take a while, so I've cut out the boring parts. Rails 3 is now installed. But as a demonstration, I'll create a generic empty Rails project, run the bent bundle installer, run up a basic server, and access the app. So to create a new Rails free app, I use Rails new. I go into my app, and I run bundle install to install any gems that are required by the app. Now I run Rails server, I'll just right click on this URL here and open this in Firefox. And there you go, a very basic generic Rails free app running on Ruby 192 under Ubuntu 10.10. Happy coding!